Today in the bunker, we're going to build a house for Zona Alpha. What I did was, I went out on the YouTubes and watched some videos um, that various creators have done from inside the actual real-life exclusion zone around Chernobyl. And in this case, there was a house in Belarus that was abandoned that I used as the basis for this one. So I laid out, figured out about how big I wanted it, and laid out the various pieces uh, on graph paper so you can kind of make sort of a scale drawing of it. Um, this is actually slightly larger than it will really be. One of these squares is supposed to be five millimeters. They're actually six, so it's just a tad larger. But you, it gives you a good idea of the layout, the size, all that good stuff. And in preparation, I, I started to also lay out onto the coffee stirrers the size that I was going to need for the various pieces of the window frames. And I really don't like doing windows, so of course what do I do? I pick a house that has 11 windows. So that was just well done on my part. But we're going to lay this out on some foam core and start cutting it out. Since I'm working with black foam core, I went and got a white colored pencil, which helps a great deal on your layout. So if you, if you have one, um, it's a fantastic thing. If not, a regular pencil works. It's just a little more difficult to see. One of the important things about making your buildings is to make sure that they look correct with whatever figures you're using. Um, I'm doing this project in 20 millimeter, so here's one of my previously based 20 millimeter figures. And the top of the windows and doors should be about a centimeter from the top of this wall, which will put it right on line with where he is. So that'll look pretty good together. So just something to consider, no matter how detailed your drawings are, mock it up a little bit, hold it next to a figure, see if it looks right. If it doesn't, then adjust it as needed. Because it doesn't matter what the math says, if your eyeball tells you it's wrong, it's wrong. Alright, so we got the layout done, and I ended up going back to my mechanical half millimeter pencil, because at this scale the white pencil is just a tad fiddly for windows and whatnot. But if I was doing a 28 millimeter build or larger, it'd be great. But in any case, um, I ended up hosing up the measurements a couple times, so you can see where I had to go back and correct that. So it helps once you're settled on what you're going to do is mark in the spaces, you know, that's a window, that's a door, that's a window. I need to mark these. And uh, this is where a project where you could use applique windows would be really great because then you wouldn't have to cut out 11 blasted windows. So we'll cut that out and be right back. All right, so we've got the windows and the door cut out. That took a little bit, but you want to try and be neat. You don't have to be perfect, but, um, you know, accuracy, neatness, that all counts. So let's uh, take this apart and start to put the pieces in a coherent order and uh, see what we get. Okay, so there's our basic pieces cut out. Um, we laid them out to make sure that the footprint is about what we wanted. Um, this probably could have stood to be a little bit bigger, but that's fine. These houses don't have to be giant. They're really more scenery than anything else. Um, you can build bigger, better ones with detailed interiors if you want. Um, I'm just trying to put a lot of them on the table and not take up too awful much room. So um, we'll put the window frames in before we actually start assembling the carcass, and we'll be right back. To speed things along, I pre-measured on these coffee stirrers, there's 11 windows, I pre-measured uh, two sets of 11 of the top and bottom plates for the windows. So I'm going to cut these out with EMT shears and uh, we'll start gluing them in. Okay, so we've got a pile of these cut out. We're just going to take some PVA and here again you can use super glue or you know, whatever. I just, I like PVA because it's very forgiving. Um, I'm not all that accurate when I glue things, so I kind of have to take steps to 
make sure I don't glue something to my fingers or to the wrong part of the terrain. And just take and put those pieces in there. Like that. And uh, even if your windows don't look so great, adding these pieces really helps sell the fact that it's a window and not just a hole cut in a wall. Okay, so I'm going to do that to the rest of those, and we'll be back. Another thing you can do to help sell the, the window effect is very, very slightly push out the wood or whatever you're using in there to give kind of a, just a, enough of a lip to sort of catch a shadow. And depending on what your siding is going to be, that you may have to push it out farther. Um, you may not be able to push it out enough. You may have to add an external piece, but... In any case, something to be mindful of. That's an easy way to, to get that effect. All right, so there is all of our top and bottom window pieces. And we're gonna go and do the same thing with the sides. I also did the uh, top of the door jam while I was in there doing that. So we'll do all of the side pieces. I'm just gonna kind of custom cut those to fit uh, just to get them knocked in there. Uh, one thing here is a lot of times I have a tendency to try to be in a hurry during these steps because I don't enjoy them, but these buildings, you know, 20, 30 years from now, it'd be really cool if somebody picked them up and said, wow, that's a nice building. So take your time now because it pays off later. And with a little bit of patience, you can complete the window frames and they look pretty good. So we're going to do all the rest and the door and we'll be back. Okay, so we've got all that done. You'll notice in the course of doing these, you'll probably end up with little gaps that are in there. And just take a little bit of PVA. It's one of the other reasons I work with PVA. It's a very forgiving medium. And just kind of smooth it in there, like almost like it's caulk or something. And uh, that'll help close that up. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know. Just take your time. Do your best. I know you could make an awesome looking building, because if I can make something that looks halfway decent, you can probably make something that's awesome. So... Let's put this together and see where we're at. Okay, so we're going to glue this together the way I normally glue these together. Just PVA, we'll pin it on the corners. The biggest thing is just to make sure that your, your corners are square as best you can. And that's where one of these mats comes in handy because you can visual reference right there. So um, we'll put this all together and see what we get. One thing to be careful of is when you put your pins in, don't push it into a window or a door frame. Be kind of mindful of how much space you got there. All right, so everything's pinned and glued. We're going to wait for that to dry. Everything's fairly square. Doesn't have to be perfect, but um, here again, neatness counts. So it makes it easier when you try to make the roof pieces and all that. So that'll be our next part of this. I also realized I was going to do some kind of fancier window inserts, and I should have done that while these pieces were still separate. But as usual, I get in a hurry and I screw things up. So we'll fiddle them in later. All right, so this would have been a lot easier if these pieces were laid flat. But as you can see, I did one of the window inserts. Um, it's a tad overscale, but that's fine. It just gives you that impression. Eastern European windows a lot of times are kind of broken up into thirds in kind of a T-shape. So I'm gonna do that for all of these windows. I may board a few of them up so I don't have to, but um, it gives it a, a very Eastern European flair, which is what you want in the zone. And I should add, this is a place where I did break down and use super glue. Um, I just went and got some medium and I kind of wedged those pieces in there. I wedged that top T in there first, then glued it, waited for that to dry a little bit, made the bottom part, glued that. So it's slow going, but it's worth it. Um, I mean, it would really help to have some pre-made cast windows that I'll make later in the year, and we'll do that for some of the future projects. It'll be nice just to put them in there and they'll look great. But in the meantime, we'll scratch these together and uh, it'll be fantastic. 
All right, so I've got the top portion done in all the rest of the windows. And uh, I started here and went around this way. So this should be dry enough. I can put the T portion in and go around and finish all those. And boy, this would have been easier if I'd done it the right way. All right, so all the windows are done. And in the process of test fitting everything and looking at it, I decided that the building was just a hair too short. So I glued some wood underneath it that's about five millimeters. I, I made the wall height from 35 to about 40, and that seems to work really well. So now everybody can look through the window correctly. The door is nice and tall. The door is probably a little overly tall, but that's fine. But uh, it looks like it fits a little better that way. So that's the size we'll use going forward. All right, so the base is on, well, not the base, but the kind of the foundation there that I added just to raise it up. Uh, is dry. The windows are all dry. Everything's firmed. I cut the roof supports and that's a matter of just cutting it the width of the wall and then figuring out how much of a pitch you want in the roof. I did it kind of based on the images I saw in the YouTube video so it's not an exact measurement. I just do it till it looks about right. And then we'll add another piece in the back which you'll see how that goes together. The, some of these Russian roofs or Ukrainian roofs or Belarusian roofs are kind of peculiar to Western eyes, the way they're designed, but it'll make sense when we're done. So we're going to, I'm gonna take some of this good stuff. I'm gonna go treat it with the sandable sealer and uh, we'll put that on there and get it ready to, to glue in place. I cut these a little small so I can sort of adjust it um, we can make it up on the ridge cap if, if there's a, a too big a gap we can put another piece on there so that's fine so we'll go treat that stuff and we'll be back all right so in putting the roof on once we have the stuff treated um, this addition was added to the house later apparently so I've notched out the roof to make that better fit that has the advantage of when this roof piece comes off because this will all be one piece it has a, another mechanism to lock onto the building and kind of align it and keep it on there. So that'll be good. But let's keep going and we'll be right back. All right, so we've got the second part of the roof kind of halfway assembled here. Um, I may have cut these a little bit short, but these uh, Eastern European houses have a kind of weird sort of hipped roof thing going on sometimes. And I wanted to try and add that because the original house actually had it so it's kind of a pain to do it's but we'll fake it we'll just uh we'll make it work so we'll be back in doing this build i have a theory that eastern europeans built their houses with roofs that have like 11 angles on them to confuse invaders maybe i'm not sure in any case uh, i'm going to wait for this to solidify a bit before I mess with it. Um, a lot of it, I'm a little sloppy on the angles, but I think when I put the actual corrugated iron on there, I can sort of even out everything and, and make it look okay. So uh, we should be good, but it's it's a little fiddly. Um, not gonna lie, I'm not real good at the complex maths and all that. I, I wasn't a carpenter. My grandfather was and my dad was, but I'm not. So. I, I kind of struggle with it, but uh, I think we'll end up with something that looks pretty good on the table. So uh, stay with us. So I've started putting on the corrugated, and I'm using the sheets just for the time aspect. They're a lot easier to use, and at this scale, they, they work pretty well. They're, they're about the right size. The rooftop, I had a gap at the top, so I just cut a couple of coffee stirs. I cut them in half lengthwise and then cut them to fit and put them in place there so um, that should close that gap pretty well so we'll uh, put the rest of the corrugated on here now because the top piece is going to overlap with the bottom i have scored the back of this paper and i'm going to just kind of peel this away to expose the corrugation so i can lay it on there and glue it in place and have it overlap and not be too unsightly so we'll get that ready. 
All right, so we've got that backing paper taken off. This is ready to go. So we will put some PVA on it and get it ready. We'll lay a nice bead on there. Not overly heavy, but enough. And we'll get it up near where any edges will be because we don't want those to pull away. Put the cap back on the glue. And then we will lay that on there. And if you're careful when you cut this, you'll match up your corrugation lines and it'll fit very, very snugly. And if you're really careful, you won't even get a bunch of glue that leaks out. So that'll be a bonus. But there's our first side. So that's how we're going to do it all the way around. So we'll be back. Now to do around the back side, you've got to do a lot of trial and error fitting. So take your time with it. Um, I don't have any clever answers as to how to do that well. I just kind of eyeball it until it fits. Also, a, a note on working with this stuff is if you have a toothpick, that makes a wonderful, once you score it, get down in there and peel this down this way, it's a lot easier. And then you can just peel that off. Okay, now cutting this piece, you not only have the angle and depth to consider, you also have where these corrugations lie on each other. And that may be the fun thing to fit. I may have to split this and kind of wedge it, but uh, we'll fiddle with that. Okay, so we finally got this top portion fitted and what I did was ended up overlapping it. I was so confused as to why that wouldn't just fit, and then I realized this is two separate pieces. It's not one piece like it was in the front, so I'm really not very bright. But in any case, it's usually you can kind of fake it until it fits. Um, it looks worse than it is, really. So let's do the rest of this. Okay, so maybe it is as bad as it seems, but with these back pieces, you've got this 45 degree angle piece coming in and it, it's a lot of test fitting. I've got the angle of this all completely hosed, but we're going to go with it. It won't look too bad, but uh, anyway, endeavor to persevere. Somehow I got this piece fitted. I'm not sure how. Um, a little of it was overhanging a bit more than I would care for, so I glued a piece of coffee stir under there for extra strength. So that should be pretty firm. And I'm going to do the rest of this and we'll be right back. Okay, got all the roofing on. All we have to do now is put some flashing over the top seams. And I may do some on the bottom here, I don't know. But um, yeah, that uh, actually went together pretty well. It's a little fiddly, but once you get the hang of it, it's not so bad. And if you're really good at imagining spatial relations, then this is a snap. Um, I'm very poor at it, so it makes it more of a challenge. But in any case, so we'll uh, put some flashing on and we'll be good to go. For the flashing, we're just gonna use some of the drink carton that I always use for everything. I'm gonna put the slick side down because that's already kind of moisture treated. That way, once we glue this down and then paint this top, it'll be pretty rugged and resist a bit of moisture. So we'll do that here and here and uh, see what we get. All right, so I've got that first one glued on. Now I, I scored that so that I could bend it, um, but the angle of this is such that it doesn't really want to hold that bend very well. So be sure to lay a good heavy bead in there in the center so it'll grab. It's not going to be super snug against the bottom there, but it shouldn't come off. You put a good dose of PVA in there, it'll, it'll hold. And then uh, you can go back later and shoot some up underneath there too. 
just for extra strength but uh, we'll put this one on and we'll see what we get all right and there is all of our seams covered with flashing and once it's painted that'll blend in you won't really notice it uh, you just don't want great big gaps there between the sheets of corrugated iron so anyway um, next up will be to do our siding although I am going to take the roof off and put I'm gonna glue some pieces in so that this slots directly into the building I'll probably just use some pieces of coffee stick and uh, that way it just slides right down on there and won't wiggle but uh, all right, so let's see what we get so last night uh, I was trying to put some siding on and I did the roof piece and those bits that came out pretty good so that was uh, that was going great and I said oh, well let's let's go ahead and do the main body of the house and I didn't take a picture of it, which is unfortunate, because I had a rather dreadful mishap with the, the siding. And when I removed it, it actually pulled a portion of the wall away. So that was a little disheartening. But I remembered that I had recently purchased this. It's a Vallejo ground texture. It's the uh, gray sand. And I bought it at the suggestion of um, my good friend Brian down at Hangar 18 uh, to do concrete and whatnot. But I thought, you know, if I paint over it in a non-concrete color, this should be suitable for um, simulating that plaster over lath finish that a lot of these houses have. The original house had wood siding, and that's hosed on this one, so we're going to salvage it as best we can and, and put the, the texture paste is on here. It's dried overnight, and uh, I think it'll take paint fairly well. And I apologize, my voice is probably a little off. I'm a bit um, relaxed, so I just wanted to get a little bit done on this video so it's not too late um, I try to put something out every few days so I'm a little tardy this week and I apologize but the roof piece or pieces all the corrugated tin I painted with a mixture of Mod Podge and black paint. I, I learned that from our friends over at, or our friend at Black Magic Craft, who is a wonderful fellow and a great craftsman. And uh, I don't know him personally, but I love his channel. And uh, you know, if you have time, go go watch some of his videos because he is really, really talented. And that's a hashtag, really, really, for those of you following along. But it really toughened up the the corrugated bits. So that made it quite a bit more gamer proof and sealed the seams and all that good stuff. So very, very happy with how that turned out. So we will put some paint on these various pieces and we'll see what we get. One of the other things I experimented with when I was doing the uh, repair on that building last night was baking soda and PVA glue which is very very subtle but it is it does have a nice texture so I may use that in the future the Vallejo paste is a bit more aggressive you can kind of see a little better especially once you put a wash on it and probably hit that with a little bit of dry brush it'll really pop off of there but uh, even even just the baking soda and the PVA uh, works really well. I tried it in various fashions and, and you can see how it's built up a texture. So we'll experiment with more with that um, in some future videos. It's got a lot of concrete to do. If you're a Battlefield fan I want to make portions that are inspired by Zavod 311 the map from Battlefield 4 which is literally a Russian tank 
factory slash decommissioning facility. I'm not going to make the whole thing because I don't have, you know, a billion T-55 models. But um, some of those buildings would be great, the barracks and whatnot. So watch for that. We'll, we'll, we'll do some things with this and make some interesting stuff.